Welcome to the inside of my Tesla Model Y. As you saw in the previous clips, I had just got done installing the Starlink Mini into my Contron X suction mount, and we're getting ready to go on a road trip. And I thought it'd be a good chance to test the Starlink Mini in motion, see what kind of speeds we can get up and down, also the latency, and then checking on the reliability. I'm gonna be going on you know, 160, 170 mile drive, take me two and a half hours or so, probably stop halfway along the way to check in with you. But I thought it'd be an interesting video just to show you my setup and explain how I'm gonna be doing this test. So let's jump right into my setup. You already saw the first part of it where I'm showing you how I hook it up. I've got a 12 volt outlet in the rear that I hook up to for power. I've got the cable off of Amazon. It's just an adapter cable that goes from the car outlet to the Starlink Mini's power plug. I'll leave a link in the description below if you're interested in that. And then, like I mentioned before, Contron X suction cup mount directly to the roof, the glass roof of my Tesla Model Y. And of course, I'm using my Starlink Mini because it is able to be powered directly off of DC from my car. And it's just smaller, lighter, way easier to travel with. So I know a lot of you are curious about how the Starlink Mini will perform in motion. I've got mine running on the Rome 50 gigabyte plan, which allows for in motion use. And that's a great plan if you don't need a whole lot of data for example, if you're just traveling sporadically in the car like I do with my Mini. So how I'm gonna run this, Tesla's actually pretty unique in that we have the ability to run a Wi-Fi network and connect, and the car connect actually connects to it. So I've got the car connected to the Mini Wi-Fi network right now, so all the music and map and navigational data will come through the Starlink Mini for that. I've also got a web browser pulled up that I can run while I'm driving. And I'll be able to just quickly, you know, hit the button, you know, in half a second and run speed test throughout the drive just to see the performance as we go along. But I wanted to go ahead and run one right now because the Starlink has been booting up. Uh, it's been over 15 minutes. I do have a pending update that it already downloaded, as you can see on my, my iPad here. But I'm just in my driveway right now getting ready to go. And I figured I'd do a speed test for you real quick just to check the baseline performance. We are... We are just sitting here in the driveway. Um, the car is obviously right next to the Wi-Fi ready radio of the Mini, so the Wi-Fi is not really an issue. And we're gonna see what kind of speeds we can pull. I'm already seeing about 155 megabits per second down. Official result, 157.44 megabits per second down. And we're pulling around 14 megabits per second up. Latency looks like right now is 23 milliseconds. So really impressive stuff, just sitting here stationary in the car in my driveway. We'll have to compare this baseline result as we're driving at highway speeds to my destination. I will also be checking in with you on the iPad here when I, when I stop, pull over halfway or so for a little break. And we're gonna check the statistics to see, to see what kind of, uh, not only ping success, but average latency, average power draw, that sort of thing. I'm really wanting to see not only how the Starlink Mini performs in motion as far as speeds, but reliability as well. So we're gonna be checking in, seeing if we get any outages along the way. It's the next day from that previous clip. Uh, I wanted to get everything set up yesterday so I could make sure it's working today. But I'm on the road now on our little 170-ish mile trip or whatever it's gonna be. Um, driving down this 55 mile an hour state highway. So I thought it'd be a good chance to actually test it out in conditions like this, where it's rolling hills, there's trees all around us. And I'm gonna go ahead and start the speed test here on the Tesla itself. Looks like we're headed about 50 megabits per second down. It's pretty consistent throughout that whole test there. And it looks like we're at right around 10 megabits per second up. So we're gonna do a lot more of these kinds of spot checks along the way here at various speeds, at various kind of roads. Um, on, like I said, kind of a state highway right now. You can see the results there. Uh, not too bad, definitely slower than what we were at, you know, just as a stationary in the driveway. But that's to be expected. Uh, you know, when you're in motion, you have less optimal satellite choices. Uh, you may have more obstructions as trees come along and, 
you know, your, your angles and everything with the satellites are just not ideal. And especially with the Mini, because the Mini doesn't have quite as much uh, transmit power as the bigger units. So uh, this is the first check-in. We'll check in with you down the road a little bit as we're on the highway. I've been cruising along here on the highway. We're on the interstate now. Um, I've been going about 75 miles per hour. So now's a good chance to check in and do a couple speed tests just to see where we're at. Uh, we've got pretty you know, clear view of the sky right now because we're on an interstate, it's a pretty wide open area. So let's see what kind of speeds we can get. And because I know I'll get a lot of comments, uh, how I'm doing this is right now, Elon Musk gave basically every United States Tesla owner 30 days free for the full self-driving. Uh, it's a supervised full self-driving. So as long as I'm looking at the road, which I am right now, uh, the car will drive itself to my destination. So I don't have to worry about you know steering inputs or braking or, or throttle. Obviously on an open interstate like this with very little traffic, that's pretty easy to do. So uh, that's how I'm uh, doing the, these tests. I'm just reaching over to the screen with my peripheral vision and hitting the go button and then kind of reading the numbers every now and again. So what we got here at 75 miles per hour, it looks like 40.27 megabits per second down and right around 10 megabits per second up. So let's just run another one just to see. And this is pretty awesome, this full self-driving uh, deal, the latest version anyway, uh, especially on the highway. That's mainly where I've been using it is, is road trips and highway cruising like this where, you know, it just, I don't have to really do anything. I just, I just set the speed and as long as I'm paying attention to the road, it does everything else for me. Uh, as far as the, the Mini's performance, uh, I'm not checking the statistics app, the Starlink app statistics section while I'm driving, obviously, because that's not safe. But when I pull over about halfway through the trip, I will take a look at the performance of this current session. So it'll show me any outages. It'll show me average latency, things like that. Um, speaking of which, I forgot to mention latency. Uh, 20, let's see, 45 milliseconds of latency on that test. So a little bit higher as we're in motion. Uh, I know the stationary tests, as the dog is shaking around back there, uh, the stationary tests were a little bit lower than that, right around 30 milliseconds. So second test here, 56 megabits per second down, 24 megabits per second up this time. So really good performance there. It seems like based on the just current couple of tests that we've done here so far within the last hour, that at speed, the Mini's capabilities are cut down by quite a bit. So stationary, we were hitting right around 150 megabits per second, and now we're at around 50, and that seems to be kind of where we're, where we're capping out. We'll have to see, I'm gonna run uh, several more speed tests and then you know just film things, uh, any interesting things that happen. I'm not gonna bore you too much with back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back speed tests, but uh, just wanted to check in real quick. I'll check in with you a little bit later down the road. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention it. The Mini is not just you know sitting there doing nothing. So I have the, my car's uh, Wi-Fi network is connected to the Mini. So it's using data for uh, the map here. And I have, I've turned on the satellite view map so it can download more data consistently as we go along here. And then also I'm streaming music as well. Uh, so using data from the Mini, from the car, uh, from demands from the car. So that's how I'm going to be checking some of the uh, average latency, you know, throughput, things like that when we, when we stop in halfway to check the Starlink app, uh, that'll give me a lot of good information about how it's been performing because I'm constantly using data. Now, you know, maps and music don't need a ton of throughput, but it's still good to uh, constantly need data downloading from the Mini just to check those, that ping success and the average latency and the average power consumption, which we'll check in shortly here. All right, so I just pulled over for a little break here and I thought it'd be a good time to check our stats. So we have had, as far as outages, um, I left at around 12.30ish, uh, so that's, that, that's this first bit as it was just booting up from 12.16 to 12.30ish. Uh, it looks like we had one two second outages uh, along the way. So at 1.16 p.m. we had an outage for two seconds. That's the only interruption that we've had this entire trip. Um, average power draw, 17 watts, very impressive. Average latency, 38 milliseconds. And then we've had 99.42 ping success. So extremely reliable, just two seconds of outages for that entire hour and a half or so that we've been driving on this trip. 
So it looks like it started to rain here on my trip and I thought it'd be a good opportunity to see what the Starlink was doing. I'm still at 75 miles per hour in the interstate, but the signal from the Mini might have a harder time going through this rain. So let's run another speed test here, see what we can come up with. Uh, so far, as you saw from the statistics when I showed you during the, the previous stop about 20 minutes or so ago, um, virtually no outages, perfect reliability. Uh, latency has been really good. Uh, so this test right here, we're running around 38 megabits per second down. Still good latency, 45 milliseconds of latency. And it looks like we're gonna hit around 17 to 18 megabits per second on the upload. So even, even though it's raining now, we've got pretty steady rain. Uh, it's not impacting the signal too much as far as performance or latency. So, so far, as far as the driving tests go, I think it's pretty clear now. I've done enough testing to be able to show you that Starlink Mini in motion under a glass roof is capable of some really great speeds, more than you would ever need for, for in motion use. Um, so stationary, we saw you know 150 megabits per second, but so far almost every single one of my tests on at highway speeds have been around that 50 megabits per second down mark and around 10 to 20 megabits per second up. Latency has pretty much always been around 40 to 50. Uh, stationary, it's a little bit lower, but still really good latency. Uh, I'm extremely impressed with how this is performing. The Contron X suction mount has been doing great. I haven't had any issues with that. Uh, I'll do one more check-in with you when we get to the destination, go over those final numbers, the final reliability to see if we have any more outages due to this weather. So I'll check in with you in a bit. Rain is cleared out, so I thought it'd be a good chance to run one more speed test here on the highway, just to give it one last shot, see what we can do. It's been running around that 50 megabits per second down mark. A little bit better this time, so we're running at around 69. Oh, okay, just crossed 70 megabits per second. Latency is still really good. Ping is at 44 milliseconds, so even in motion, it's really impressive that Starlink's able to deliver those high speeds and low latencies, especially critical in motion. And then you have uh, upload speeds here. We got 13 megabits per second. Really good stuff. Um, I think my, my theory that I mentioned in the last clip though is probably true and that the Mini, while it's in motion, it, it, the speeds are gonna be cut down for sure probably true of any dish but it's especially noticeable with the mini it's got a you know weaker power supply as you saw on the statistics app at the halfway mark when i checked in with you we're running under 20 watts for the average power consumption which is extremely good um, final speed test here 60 megabits per second down and 15.7 megabits per second up really good stuff um, i'll check in with you at the end of my drive I'm gonna look at the Starlink app again, check for any of the any outages or major issues that we've had on the second leg of the trip. So I'll see you in a moment. All right, so final check-in here. Looks like as far as outages, we had no outages that time. It was about an hour, a little over an hour there on that stretch. Uh, ping success 99.94%. Latency averages around 28 milliseconds. Power draw a little bit higher that time, probably because of the rain that we ran into, 43 watts of power draw there. So overall, really impressive stuff with the Starlink Mini in motion. A uh, future video, I'm gonna be testing the Gen 3 and we're, we can kind of compare the two. I think the Gen 3 will be, be a little bit more consistent as far as offering those higher speeds and not seeing those drop-offs when you're in motion. But overall, having around 50 megabits per second down, 10 to 20 up, and latencies under 50 milliseconds is really impressive stuff. So I appreciate you watching. Let me know what you thought of the video in the comments below and we'll see you in the next one.